Hello my crafty friend and thank you so much for tuning in to today's very special video. Day 11, if you can believe it, of our 12 days of gifts to make video series. And the reason today's video is so special is that I'm sharing with you a gift that you can make that has been one of my personal favorite gifts both to receive and also to gift. And it's something I'm sure you've seen before if you have seen my previous videos on this channel, but they are, of course, the paper doll and her matching, stunning fantasy outfits designed by the beautiful and talented Cat Stone. So these are the printables of Cat's original art that I have available in my Etsy shop. And obviously to make them into paper dolls, we're going to have to fussy cut all the way around all of them and take an exacto knife to cut the little intricate parts on the inside. It would be way, way, way too much work to do all entirely on camera in one take. And so as a very special surprise, these are going to be 12 gifts to make, but maybe not fitting within 12 days as I had originally planned. So how I'm going to do these is that today I'm going to sort of bling up the paper doll dresses and outfits. I'm going to just kind of enhance the colors with a little bit of pencil crayon, add some glitter using some really fun glitter tubes that Kat gifted me. And I might do a, a few little highlights in the hair or on her undergarments and here and there where there are feather details. And what I'm going for, I'm pulling out my precious, precious book here. This is the book Kat gave to me with the original dolls. What I'm going for is to get a little bit of the magic that Kat imbued into these pieces when she made them so, so glittery and sparkly and beautiful. So if you look at the original dolls and the original clothes, they're not just flat color. For example, like the fringe here on the bottom of this vest has really fine silver sparkles in it. And the jewelry here, like the pendant, that beautiful blue pendant, my favorite, favorite color, it just pops because she's made it metallic. So yeah, today I'm going to have some fun adding some glitters and textures and like I said, bling and movement to these prints. So yeah, I just used my home printer, which is like nothing fancy. It's just a Canon um, inkjet printer. But to show you the difference, I have these, which Kat printed out on really, really beautiful glossy paper. And it's the same exact printables, but look at how much more vibrant the colors pop when they're on this kind of fancy paper side-by-side -side comparison. So yeah, I hope the camera's picking that up so you can tell <laughs> and doesn't just look like, well, geez, yeah, it's the same image. But yeah, so what I've got here, I have some, let's see, I have an old set of Prismacolor pencil crayons that I purchased in the days before I knew that Prismacolor are not vegan. Um, so I, what I would suggest if you're looking to buy a set of really nice art pencil crayons, go for, I believe the company is called DeWint or Der, Derwent. I'll look that up and put it in the video description. But anyway, yeah, what I'm doing here is just looking for some of the skin color pencil crayons to just sort of deepen and even her skin tone a little bit. And then I'm, I'll do the same for all the different little colors in her dresses. I'm not going to be too perfect or too meticulous in this. That looks like a nice one. 
but yeah, just to give a little bit of depth to the printed material. And of course, like you saw, her originals are full of depth and color and texture. And even the prints, I mean, I have used the prints by themselves without any enhancement. And they have also looked stunningly beautiful. But I feel like, yeah, I just want to show you guys because I've, I've been working on a very special set of these um, that's going to go in a custom journal. And yeah, I decided before putting them in the custom journal that I just wanted there to be a touch of the artist's hand in the piece, even though they are printed. And while I was thinking, you know, how can I add a touch of the artist's hand to something that was created by a different artist, I thought, aha, if I add just a little bit of coloring over the print, it gives it just the right amount of texture. Now what I'm going to do, instead of coloring it all in in order, I'm going to go through and color all the skin color at once so that it's kind of standardized. Like so. So yeah, thank you so much for all the incredible comments that you've been posting on the videos in this series. Um, I've been reading all of them and just so enjoying it. It, it feels really Christmassy to get to read so many people's lovely Christmas memories and I've been enjoying hearing about what your favorite gifts were and favorite gifts to give and favorite to receive. It reminded me of another. Actually, there was a, a comment. If, if you're interested in this kind of stuff too, by the way, sorry, tangent for a moment. Um, yesterday's video, the video in which I made some birthstone pendants for my boyfriend's sisters, the comment section beneath that video specifically had quite a cool collection of memories shared by viewers who filled me in on their favorite Christmas memories and their favorite Christmas gifts. And yeah, the cherished family memories. And it reminded me of some of the other cool, cool Christmas gift memories that I have, especially with my grandmom. There was one year when she, she had a, an Avon catalog. So I was reminded of this because, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who commented what, unless I have my laptop in front of me, which I don't. Um, but yeah, there was one really interesting comment from a lady who said that her grandmother gifted her um, an Avon birthstone pendant, and it was the first, you know, real piece of jewelry she had received. And we all remember that feeling the first time we get something and it's real silver or real gold or a real birthstone. Another tangent, like I remember the first birthstone piece I received was on a, on a family day trip to Waterton Lakes National Park. And one of the little gift shops was selling sterling silver rings with turquoise. And my mom bought one for me because turquoise is the December birthstone. But I digress. <laughs> as soon as I read her comment and noticed the keyword Avon, like an Avon pendant, I remembered one year my grandmother had given me a copy of the Avon catalog. She had an Avon lady next door, so she was always ordering from Avon. And she asked me to go through and mark all the things that I like, anything that I might like to get for Christmas. And so I did, and I, I think I would have been in grade six or grade seven by that point in time, so preteen, but teen curious, <laughs> you know, old enough to start wanting to do things that the older girls do. And so I skipped past 
the toys. I even skipped past the jewelry and went straight to the makeup stuff. And I put my little marks next to the most outrageously colored eyeliners and all the fabulous nail polishes, every kind of makeup you can imagine, I made sure to, to mark. And I thought, you know, if she gets me any one of these things, you know, a, a really vibrant blue eyeliner or a really intense black mascara or the, the cool nail polish, that I would have been really happy. So I remember uh, leading up to Christmas, I had been staying with my grandparents while my mom was away for a teacher's conference. And my grandma took me with her to the bay where she had to buy something or other for somebody. And there was a display of really cool little purses that were kind of made in the shape and style of Chinese food takeout containers. You know, those little boxy things. And I pointed them out because they looked really, really cool. And there was one in particular. Mo most of them had kind of a, I don't know how fashion-y you are or your interests might be, but there was a one of the bags had a poochy sort of a print, so like a really floral, vibrant, kind of 1960s feeling flower design. Um, and most of them had variations of that design, but there was one in particular that was like a shiny black with multicolored glitter, <laughs> it, it, like all over, all over this little bag. And I didn't say a word, I didn't point it out, I didn't ask for it because my mom raised me. Whoops, there goes, there goes the lid to my little, my little um, panda jar. I keep a little panda jar here as like a pen holder. And it was one of the things my grandma used to have in her kitchen with toothpicks. But when she moved into a, a condo, recently I acquired quite a few of her kitchen things anyway yeah I was raised like my mom kind of trained me out of asking for things when we went shopping when I was quite young and so yeah I, I would kind of admire <laughs> the items that caught my eye but I would never I would never say hey can I have this and I remember also they were they were kind of expensive. I don't know if you have the bay in the States, but up here in Canada, the bay was like, at that time, it was the more expensive of the different department stores, like Sears and Eaton's were a little bit cheaper. The bay was like the high-end option. So anyway, yeah, it, it, was a, it was beyond a budget that I could dream of back then, you know, more than my allowance money could be saved up to purchase. And anyway, my grandma must have noticed me gazing in the direction of those bags because she asked me something along the lines of, which one do you think is the prettiest? And it just sounded conversational. So I said, I love the black one with the glitter. Which one do you like best? And she loved the blue one because blue is her favorite color. So anyway, it was just kind of a fun, fun thing for us to look at. And I forgot about it afterwards. But come Christmas morning at my grandmom's house, instead of having a wrapped gift for me under the tree, that bag was under the tree, the very bag, the shiny black one with the glitter that I liked best of all. And that was my very first ever brand new, not just like a hand-me-down to play with, but brand new purse. Up till then, I'd only had backpacks and, you know, my mom's old purses to play with. But it's really special, I think, for a girl. Our first purse, our first piece of jewelry, our first earrings when we get our ears pierced, all of those things. They're small, they're little, 
but I feel like we all remember them. So anyway, I was excited. I was so happy. I couldn't believe I was expecting, you know, an Avon eyeliner or maybe a nail polish set, but I was not expecting the fancy sparkly purse I had so admired. Anyway, I, I picked it up really excitedly, and as soon as I did, I realized the thing was not empty. It was heavy. So I waited my turn to open it because we always took turns to open our gifts there. And when I did, she had surprised me by stuffing it with literally every single piece of makeup that I had highlighted in that catalog. So yeah, that was a, that was a memorable one. I'm going over, so just as a, a little tip, um, you don't have to follow the exact colors that you see in the drawings. I'm kind of going over black with a chocolatey brown here. I picked up this pencil crayon thinking that it was black because the lighting in here kind of made it look black, but it's coming down chocolate. And rather than correcting that, I've decided to just kind of go with it. So yeah, that, that was a huge surprise. My boyfriend's mom told me that one year for, I forget which one, but for one of her kids, she bought, bought the kid an iPhone for Christmas. So fancy. <laughs> That's like 15 of my Avon stuffed bay purses, right? But as a fake out, instead of wrapping it up, in wrapping paper around the iPhone box. She put the iPhone box inside a bigger box and wrapped that and then put that in a bigger box and wrapped that and did that thing that we sometimes see on TV or in movies where there's a wrapped gift within a wrapped gift within a wrapped gift within a wrapped gift. And when you finally get to the bottom layer, it's the thing that you wanted. So that's always fun too. But you know, as as an environmentalist nowadays, I would not do that. I'm that girl on Christmas morning who saves everybody's used wrapping paper to incorporate into junk journals later. Yeah, I wasn't planning to color all the details over, but once I got started, the depth of color that you get with just a little bit of pencil crayon, when you're using a good quality pencil crayon, it really just takes it to the next level. See how much these pop, how much more they pop than when they were just inkjet printed? Now I'm actually going to use that same beautiful chocolate brown. To color in her hair. So what's funny is there's no way Kat could have known this, I don't think, unless she's super, super psychic. But this is the haircut that I had when I was about 18, 19 years old. So it's so cool to have a doll who has my same exact, the haircut that I had back when I probably looked the most like this that I'll ever look. It's really cool. I'm also going to go over her beautiful slippers. And then for her undergarment, what, what's neat, if you decide to make paper dolls like these for somebody, you can kind of customize it a little bit. Like when you work with a really high quality pencil crayon, the color does have a good coverage to it. So even if I'm coloring over black with green, you can see the green really nicely. And so if you're making something like this as a gift for somebody whose favorite color is, well, whatever their favorite color is, you can color in some of the details, some of the dresses, 
in their favorite color. And then no two sets that you print will ever be alike because you're doing them differently color with different colors. Anyway, see how cute that is? So yeah, like I said, this was my favorite gift to receive, my favorite gift to give. And for any, any girly girl on your list, she's going to just love something like these. For a, well, I don't, I don't want to limit it. I don't want to say, you know, for a young, a young child, she'll actually play with the paper dolls as if grown-ups wouldn't, because I've certainly played with the one Kat sent me, tried all the different outfits on her. But yeah, for, for the kind of girly girl who's into handmade books and beautiful things like these, I am sure she would love to get a set of dolls like this to include in a junk journal or they could be used as bookmarks too, a really cool set, or even just put on display. Let's see. I know there's a gold and a silver pencil crayon. Here they are. Before I go over with the glitter, I'm going to color some, just some of this gold. Yeah, so it, the light spots on here too really give us an opportunity to be creative because we can color over. I didn't want to lose that mermaid scale in this dress, but, or maybe dragon scale, given the nature of the eye that's poking through. But I just thought it would look kind of cool to have some gold even before I do the glitter layer that will have quite a bit more gold. But the, the other memory that I was grateful to have sparked after reading the comments, ooh, look at that silver. <gasps> that silver really pops, doesn't it? I hardly ever use my metallics, but when I do, I'm never disappointed. Anyway, there, there was also a lovely comment from a lady reminiscing, I think it was Erica, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, reminiscing about her grandmother when she was young and the way her grandmother would spend three days cooking in preparation for Christmas and would put on just a huge feast and fill a whole extra table that spilled over with desserts and it just sounded like the most yummy smelling kitchen and my grandma was like that too my grandma has always been oops my grandma has always loved cooking not cooking so much but she's loved baking for my entire life and so kind of like cooking was the thing she had to do to feed everybody because it's expected but baking is where she gets creative and has the most fun so anyway, reading the comment about this huge, delicious dessert spread with all kinds of different options, it reminded me of what my grandma does every year, or used to do, not so much now that she's downsized and doesn't have her, her house she's moved into. My granddad passed away in 2016, so she now lives in a sort of like an assisted living facility, but with a little bit more independence than some of them might give. But yeah, mid-December, there would always be a day when my grandmom made chocolates and it was a big production. She would melt different colors of chocolate in pots on the stove and some would have caramel fillings and some would have cherry, like maraschino cherry chocolates. And some would be like lemon, lemon curd filling, kind of like what you'd have inside a lemon meringue pie. Just the most delicious chocolates, a huge variety. And they were my favorite, favorite, favorite treat to get at Christmas time. So the year I went vegan, I was, it was the summer after grade nine that I went vegan. I was like 13 going on 14. And 
back in those days, like that was in the year, I'm going to tell you my age here. That was in 1999. So we weren't even in the 2000s yet. And there were no, at least not locally where I live, there were no vegan supermarkets or vegan chocolatiers or like places to find those kinds of, of treats, but made in a in an animal friendly kind of a way. And so I had kind of just accepted the fact that my chocolate eating days were over and that, you know, I, I wasn't really looking forward to the Christmas feast <laughs> because when you don't eat turkey and everyone there is eating a turkey and you don't eat, you don't have dairy and there's milk and all of the chocolates. It's not that you want to eat those things because in my case anyway, once I went vegan, I no longer had any desire to eat animal products. But I, I sure did wish that there were vegan versions of some of those. Like nowadays, the people who give up animal foods have like five or six different brands of vegan cheeses to choose from. I know this 7-Eleven now has like vegan chicken, faux chicken nuggets and stuff like not so in 1999. But anyway, that that year there was a big box wrapped for me under my grandma's Christmas tree. And when I opened it, it was a massive Tupperware container, like big enough that it would have spilled out of the frame if I put it on this table. It was really, really big. And it was stuffed full of every single kind of chocolate that she makes, but vegan. And she wrote out all the ingredients that she used <laughs> because she knew that I would want to know. Um, and what she had done was she bought a huge bar of really, really high-end Bernard Calibo chocolate in the darkest color that it came in. So Bernard Calibo dark chocolate that happened to be what we call accidentally vegan. So it's not like it was labeled plant-based. There, there were no real plant-based labels back in those days. But yeah, she had gone out of her way to veganize every single chocolate recipe except for the caramels, which I think even to this day, I don't think there is a vegan version of those. But I think that that was one of my best <laughs> Christmas gifts ever because it brought back so many of my child like earlier childhood Christmas memories, that taste, that smell. And there's nothing like getting something that you know was made with lots and lots of love. And I know she puts lots and lots of love into her chocolates and all the baked things. And she was really cool about that too. Like when I went vegan, she veganized a lot of her cookie recipes or she would find vegan cookie recipes. And she was raised Mennonite. And I'm not sure if anyone watching this will even know what that is. I think it's fairly specific to this part of Canada, but it's kind of like Pennsylvania Dutch or or like Hutterite, but not quite as strict. But anyway, because of her upbringing, she makes the most delicious homemade buns you could ever imagine tasting. And originally the recipe called for lard, but she has veganized even that one. So anyway, oh, is this not the perfect color for denim? I pulled a couple so I could give them both a try, but I think, I think we got a match on the first attempt. And I'm just gonna really lightly, lightly color it in to give it kind of that denim-y texture. Since her, since Cat Stone's originals were on watercolor, they had a beautiful texture already. So to kind of emulate that in the print version, I think these pencil crayons are really doing the trick. Yeah, 
I'm not going to color over everything on this one. I'm thinking just punching up some of the little details. I actually really like the muted sort of watercolor-esque effect that this one has from the printer. So just punch up some of these greens. I hope the camera is picking it up so you can see kind of the before and after. But yet yeah, food and fragrance are so keyed into our memory, aren't they? Because one thing I've seen in quite a few of the comments on these videos is the, you know, the way it smells when you go to your family Christmas gathering, and especially as kids when you don't really have the option to procure treats for yourself year round, that one special day when you know there's going to be goodies. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about as I do some coloring today, the crystal video series idea that I kind of ran by you yesterday. I am so excited about this. So I now know what my New Year's resolution is going to be for 2024. 2024 will be the year that I expand this YouTube channel beyond just my journals and my journal craft and bookmaking and start sharing more of my jewelry because that's my other major passion. I use a lot of jewelry even in my journals, so why not start making more of it for bodily adornment and talking about that too and talking about the energies of the different crystals. And so my wonderful boyfriend, uh, I told him about this yesterday that I'm going to start doing some videos about crystal energies and different gemstones and jewelry and sharing my techniques for making certain jewelry pieces. And he got all into it and said, I should also do one where I talk about like the history of jewelry and my goodness, like the ideas are just flowing now, right? It's kind of like once you just, if you're thinking, maybe one day I might do something, like, you know, maybe one day I might start a YouTube channel, or maybe one day I might take piano lessons, or whatever it might be. As long as you're thinking maybe one day you might do something, you never really get a flow of awesome ideas relating to it. But the moment you commit, the moment you decide, you know, this is the year I'm going to do that thing that I've wanted to do, it's like a floodgate, or for me anyway, I think for most of us crafty crafters, it's like a floodgate of inspiration opens up and all of a sudden the universe just downloads to you all the other related ideas that you should do along with it. So yeah, when he mentioned doing one about the history of jewelry, I thought of the veritable library of books that I've collected over the years about jewelry. So remember, I had mentioned that my grandma gives us money for Christmas now. She no longer individually shops for all of her kids or all of her grandkids. She's got lots of us. <laughs> So she, we get birthday money and Christmas money, and one of my favorite things to buy with that special money is books about jewelry. So the history of beads, the history of jewelry, museum collections of jewelry. So I've got quite a cool book collection, and I was thinking, one of the things on my to-do list is... A, a jewelry themed printable kit and journal. So I, I would love to make a jewelry journal and just fill it up with beautiful, beautiful pieces of jewelry. But I'm thinking as I create that printable kit, I'm going to go through my jewelry history books and share my process of how I make the kit. And I'm thinking it's going to be something that goes 
I might do I might do multiple variations of these, but I'm thinking for one, I would love to do the history of jewelry as the world's first currency and also one of the world's first wearable art forms because it's pretty cool. Like the, the book that I have that talks about the history of beads goes into the detail that like even the Neolithic people were talking tens of thousands of years ago, up to, up to I think 40 some thousand years old is the oldest piece of jewelry they found with hard to explain levels of precision technology used in working the stones and the metal, by the way, for those who are interested in um, ancient, ancient cultures and ancient archeology span and what I quite strongly believe is a, a prehistory that we don't really learn about in the textbooks because they don't tell us that they had advanced stone cutting technology, but yet here are these things that prove they did. But anyway, I'm thinking of, of a few different types of printable kits I'd, I'd like to make. One, a crystal healing printable kit with a chakra gem theme. Um, one I'd like to do is the history of jewelry in printables. And then another one that I'd love to do would be birthstone printables. I started doing a, a series of paintings in watercolor that I'd never finished, but I'm going to have to finish them. Um, of birthstones along with the monthly flowers. So the same way we each have a birthstone, we each have a flower for our, our birth month. Like mine for December would be holly, which always kind of disappointed me because holly, <laughs> it's a berry, it's not a flower. And yet there we are. But yeah, I'm thinking like a birthstone themed journal would be kind of cool too. So yeah, it's going to be fun. And I, I think that's why so many of us love jewelry so much. If we have any kind of past life memory associated with it, we'll remember the way it made us feel when we adorned ourselves with certain metals and stones and elements. And maybe the love of those materials carries forward. Like a lot of people who feel a connection to Egypt, for example, will be drawn to wearing scarab shaped jewelry and gemstones like lapis lazuli, turquoise, carnelian, amethyst. It's really interesting. Like as, as far as stones are concerned, in our, in our era of civilization, the stones that we call precious are the hardest of the stones on the Mohs scale. So diamonds, of course, being the top, and then sapphires, rubies, emeralds. And yet historically, it wasn't always like that. Uh, in ancient Egypt, what we call precious gems were often overlooked, and what we would call semi-precious stones are what they considered the most precious. Again, the lapises, the amethysts, the carnelians, the, the stones that had the greatest saturation of color, opaque or transparent, seemed less relevant to them, but the stones that have the, the deepest shades. So it's interesting how tastes change from not only just from era to era, but even from generation to generation, tastes can change quite a bit. Whether that be the beauty standards of, of body size and shape, like in the time of Botticelli, in the time of Rubens, in the time of a lot of those old master painters, the ideal feminine form was quite 
voluptuous and curvaceous. And then in our modern era, the opposite <laughs> seems to be true. Well, maybe curves are still appreciated, but slimness is very highly valued. Whereas in that era, if a woman was very, very slim, she would have been assumed to be of the peasant stock. <laughs> you know, she can't afford food. So it's, it's interesting how the same way beauty standards change, the, the tastes that we have for jewelry change. But personally speaking, I feel almost like a I have a, as much of an academic interest in the topic as I do just a typical feminine love for shiny stuff. And so I, I think it's all quite cool. One of the journals that May made for me from Saudi Arabia, she included a few pages of a layout from a Saudi Arabian fashion magazine that showed this gorgeous Arabic model in the old part of Riyadh. I, I show it as a close-up in the video that I made flipping through the journal that she made for me. But there was a really cool jewelry that that model was wearing too. And then there was a whole page made May added showing really interesting styles of jewelry that are all like the traditional Arabic jewelry. In fact, I have kind of done some jewelry themed journals before, but more theme specific. Like I did one called The Emerald Muse based on an gorgeous little painting that I found online of a, a lady with emerald earrings. The girl in the emerald earring was another journal I did based on that image. And then I think I did one called the Ruby Mystic or the Mystic Ruby, inspired by a ring that I found at an antique shop with a faux ruby in it that just looked, it looked like it had a story to tell. So yeah, I've made more individual gem themed books before. And then there was a comment on one of those asking if I would do a diamond themed journal for those who have April birthdays. And it's, it's on my list. I've got no shortage. I'm never going to run out of ideas, guys. Like, I've got tons and tons of journals on my little to-do one-day list. But I'm thinking instead of doing more journals that have just a single gem making up their theme, I'm going to start doing just... A, ju a jewelry themed book and then make some printables to accompany it. And then a crystal healing themed book with specifically, um, specifically like the chakra gems to follow the layout. And then I'm really trying to challenge myself. You may have noticed that for the past, for the past few videos here, I've really, or not videos, sorry, for the past few journals I've made here, I've really tried to create a printable kit of some kind or another for every single journal. And that's one of the reasons I haven't made my, my jewelry themed journal yet, because I want to create printables for it. One, uh, one of the pieces that I'm looking forward to is, you know how... You look forward to your 18th birthday, if you're Canadian, because that's when you reach the legal age. Um, I think a lot of us crafters, we look forward to the days when the antique books that we have will become public domain. <laughs> because then it's a, it's a, it's basically a free for all. You can print as many images as you want once it's public domain and create imagery to sell, use it in collages, use it for journal covers, etc. So anyway, I have this really gorgeous Art Deco 1930 Burks Christmas catalog, like the Burks Jewelry Company 
sort of like their wish book for that year of 1930. And it is filled with sumptuous illustrations of jewelry. Um, so I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting, I think it's 2027 when that is going to enter the public domain. So part of me was thinking I'll wait until 2027 to do that particular themed journal. But now I'm thinking, you know, it doesn't have to be, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. So I'm just gonna, going to use these to punch up any of the gold accents. So this looks like the best match to that gold. But yeah, I was thinking, well, I can still do a printable kit out of those when 2027 gets here. But in the meantime, I, I don't have to wait and not do any jewelry themed printable kits, right? So that's on my to-do list. How about you? So last, in my last video, I asked, what are your favorite Christmas memories? And what's your favorite gift you ever gave and the favorite gift you ever received? This time I'm wondering, do you have a New Year's resolution? Do you do New Year's resolutions? Most years I don't. <laughs> I don't bother with a resolution, but I'm having so much fun with the crafting that I'm thinking, yeah, this year my New Year's resolution is do more craft with me style content like these. I'm just really amazed by the positive feedback I get on these. I wasn't sure how watchable a video would be of me just kind of crafting, but not a lot of views, like I think around a hundred at the most on most of these, but the views that come, even though it's not a lot of them, it seems to be quality views. You know, those of you who are watching seem to be really enjoying it. I'm gonna do a weird little thing here and just see if it works. It does. I thought it would be kind of fun to add some pretty little dots. Oh, and here she's done dots, so I'll do them. This reminds me of the way she's done this kind of mesh overlay at the top of this dress. It reminds me of what a figure skater or an ice dancer might wear for their costume. And the other thing I'm going to do here is add some gold bangles up her arm just for fun just because she's got that funky style so yeah this year my new year's resolution and don't worry if you go over the edge I can still see where the original doll ended so I'm not going to cut the ugly parts <laughs> where my pencil marks go over I'll stay within the lines. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to deepen that really, really pretty horse in the handbag. So let me find a good gray. So I deliberately didn't wear my favorite rings today because it's hard to work with my hands if I have rings on. And I found this cute little seed beaded ring among some jewelry my grandma gave me to use in journals. And I, I put it on because it has turquoise and green. And my birthstone is turquoise and my boyfriend's is peridot. So it's kind of a cool little, this little ring probably won't go into a journal unless it's into my own personal journal, since I noticed that significance. But anyway, I deliberately avoided my typical big heavy rings so that I would be able to get the full use of my hands, <laughs> the full range of hand motion. And even still, when I went digging for that gray pencil crayon, the ring got stuck in the box. So yeah. The wonderful world of 
craft with me videos or craft along videos. We sometimes have to switch up and improvise our plans a little. I'm going to make these silver just because. What a cool handbag. Like, by the way, Cat Stone, she's not just a great artist. I feel like she's also a great fashion designer. Like, what horse-loving girl among us would not want to carry that adorable tote? And the boho necklaces that she's layered there, oh, it's just so, so gorgeous. She's really created a fantasy wardrobe. So, she's also included these really fun gel pen looking pens. And I'm just gonna see. That's like a metallic-y turquoise. This might even be the same thing that she used to make that gemstone really pop on the original. I'm gonna do that and I'm also going to fill in these pretty beads. I made a set of these paper dolls for my friend May and I included them in a little book that I made specifically to hold them as part of a little happy mail that I made for her birthday. And just, oh, it was after, after I sent May that book and after Kat purchased my first book featuring these dolls with backgrounds I designed. It was after that that I discovered the joy of coloring them over and adding colored detail. And I, I wish I had done this. <laughs> I wish I had done this to both of their journals. Or sorry, two, yeah. To May's doll book and also to the one that I had for my Etsy shop. I'm just gonna fill this in with glitter because that's how it was in the original. Super, super pretty. And I think I'm also going to overdraw that fringe a little bit. But I'm going to use that teal color so that it kind of matches some of the accents in the dress. Let's see. What I what I do love about this set is the variety of colors that you get, like multiple shades of blue, multiple shades of purple, multiple shades of teal. I'm gonna go with a really deep teal. Let's see. Maybe more of a cerulean. Oh yeah. How satisfying is that when you have a pencil crayon that really has that soft, waxy quality that really does draw over what you're drawing on the way you want it to? So yeah, if I, if I had known this little pencil crayon trick, I would have certainly did a little bit of color enhancing to May's paper dolls and to the paper dolls in the book. The originals from Kat have big, beautiful, multicolored glitter that make, I think this must be a little hand mirror or compact, but this glitter is looking really nice too. So there we go, the first page is ready. I'm setting it aside to dry and I'm just going to keep doing that to all of these. The mermaid was a, a fun special added touch. So I, I'm not showing them to you yet because I want to save them for a surprise. I don't want to get ahead of myself before I'm ready to make something out of them. But Kat sent me a beautiful, beautiful case just filled with her paper dolls. Um, she's made so many paper dolls over the years, it's just incredible. And so she printed out copies of all of them to be made into special books and kits and prints to add to junk journals, to add into their own little things. I painted too heavy-handed on the bra here, so that's why I'm kind of using the tip of this squeezy bottle to pick it back up and dot it back down again. 
but I'm thinking in the new year, the other project I want to do is make a special printable background kit for each and every one of the dolls that she sent me. And it's going to be, a, it's a fairly ambitious project, but actually it's a fairly ambitious series of projects, but I think it will be worth it. But anyway, in one of her happy mails, she included not a paper doll, but a wooden doll. And this mermaid costume was one of the outfit changes for the wooden doll. And when I realized that she's standing in pretty much the same position as the paper doll, although she was a different size, she was quite a bit larger, I decided to see if I could scan that mermaid suit and then just kind of adjust the scale a little bit to make it fit the paper doll. And it was so exciting to discover that yes, in fact, <laughs> it fits. I want to enhance that hand fan because I think that fan, ooh, and these bracelets are just so, so pretty. There's some things I, you know, as the base background, I think the pencil crayons really intensify the color saturation. But for some of them, here we go. These metallic gel pens just take it to the next level. Thank you, Kat. Like, Kat, you really 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 spoiled me this year and may too for that matter i'm very excited that there's a birthday package on its way from saudi arabia may's art is just ever evolving she's always doing the most magical looking work so i'm always thrilled to see what she makes and she always includes so many extra gifts too oh, I may have colored that a little too dark but it'll be okay that's what you get I think with hand-drawn details and personally customized things. We're starting to lose our light already, aren't we? It's funny, I thought I'll do the quick, the quick part today. I'll just kind of enhance the colors on some of these. And what was meant to be the quick part has turned into an hour long video already. Tomorrow I will do the next part, which is cutting them all out. And that's, that's the long part, so <laughs> bear with me. Brace yourself if you choose to tune in and craft with me while I watch that one. Or sorry, while I, while I do that one. And now our gold. Let's see. I want to give her a golden pair of bracelets and necklace. There we go. Just having the jewelry punched up makes it look so cool. And then for this one, I'm going to put a little glitter over her strands of pearls. And of course, if you have an abundance of time while you're preparing your gifts, you can fully color in every single dress and enhance every single outfit. Oops, that's a little bit paler, isn't it? I want to go with the goldest gold for these. I love the way these 
chains drape around this dress. It has such a cool belly dancer sort of a vibe to it. Just gorgeous. That's why I say Kat is not just a talented artist. She's also such a talented fashion designer. This is like my fantasy dress. If I had a fancy ball to attend. I just love the shades of purple. I love the strands of gold. There's nothing like a really long necklace that you can wrap around in multiple layers and play with like this. Let's see this big, beautiful turquoise gem. It's going to stick up a little bit more than it did before. But that's how I want to see that. There we go. I would say that's as much that's as much enhancement I'm going to do on these before cutting them out. So now I'm just going to let all of the all of the glitter gel dry overnight. And I'll be back with part two of the paper dolls, which is our 11 of 12 crafty gifts to make tomorrow. And if I'm going to see if I can also share with you how I like to hold the dresses on the dolls. There are a few ways I've come up with to do it. Um, one that includes hidden magnets, which you probably saw if you watched the flip through of the paper doll book that I made to go with these. But the faster, easier ones I've come up with include clip-on earrings to hold them in place, even just a decorated paper clip to hold them into place. Oh, I'll share that one with you too. That'll, that'll be a fun one. Um, and then another variation on using magnets where instead of hiding the magnets, we use magnets like these ones made out of pieces of jewelry. So you can imagine, for example, if there's a magnet on this yellow rose, it could go there or a golden detail. You know what? This is not yet finished. I just noticed something. Is this black? That's the black. I'm going to do this eye in gold. And then I'll say it's finished. Black outline, we're gonna do like a coppery gold for the iris. Make it real magic. Well, if I can get the copper. Let's see. Good thing I've got a whole bunch of old earrings right here. That worked. Yeah, so if you take away anything from today's video, it's that if you have pencil crayons and glitter paint or metallic paint or whatever, you can take any set of printables really and turn them into an original work of art that you've collaborated on, like a collaborative piece of art. So it doesn't have to be the doll outfits. It could be really any printable kit. And the only limit is your, your imagination. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you loved part one of the paper dolls enhancing the prints and I look forward to part two tomorrow cutting them out. You will want to have a nice drink or a snack or a craft to do along with me because tomorrow's video might look kind of repetitive just cutting out the outlines of all of these but hopefully it'll be watchable. So much love to you until then. Happy holidays. Enjoy your crafting and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.